Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. Uh, my name is Mitch, and I'm here with Keegan. Hi, Keegan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We've got a huge news story, a bunch of news Lots stories. Lots of news yeah, today. today. Um, let's see. Let's start off with probably the most important one, uh, which is the uh, we have sad news to report. There we are. So this is the this is the 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 dog that made it all happen. This one right here. I need to move the cropping. <laughs> this of bombastic this, side eye. This guy right here, right? <laughs> um, I have very bad news to report, uh, but this uh, this this dog whose name is uh, Ka Kabosu has uh, passed away. So uh, mm -hmm. let's take a moment to all remember the uh, the memory moment of silence of Kabosu. By that I mean we're gonna roll the intro. He was 18 years old though, man. That's an old fucking dog. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty old dog, right? 18 for a Shiba Inu. Um, also, Shiba. What are they called in Japanese? Shiba Ken. They're called Shiba, Shiba Ken. Ken. Yeah. Shiba uh, dogs are. I. I'm sorry. They're so. They're freaking insane. stupid. <laughs> they're insane. They're like too. the dumbest dogs in the world. And when they people really are, are like, they're so cute, I'm like, yeah, but they're so stupid. They are cute. I mean, they are. I, I think part of the reason why they are cute is because they're so stupid. But like. No, they're, they're also crazy too. They're like really high energy. They go yeah, dude. All around like stuff. my friend had a female uh, Shiba, and like like the dog was just like run around crazy. And then like when it like I, I didn't I never had a female dog as an adult. I never had a female dog as an adult. Um, and so like I didn't know that they get their periods like once a year or something like that. I didn't know that my dog was fixed. So. Yeah, so I didn't know this was a thing. And so like my friend who had a Shiba. Like his dog was on a period. It's like it lasts like a couple weeks or something like that. And like there, you can put it like a little diaper thing on them so they don't make a mess. And my friend had like white carpet throughout his American style. Oh home. no! And like the dog just refused to wear the diaper. Right. It was just like blood stains everywhere. It looked like a murder scene. Jesus. And I was just like, I just looked at this dog who's cute as shit. Don't get me wrong, cute as shit, but like just nothing going on in there. And I'm just <laughs> like, I will never buy a fucking Shiba. <laughs> That's like, uh, what is it? Irish Setters. Irish Setters are the dumbest dogs in the really? world. Oh my God, yeah. They are so, they're adorable, but they're my, dumb. My last dog was a Chihuahua, all black, had like, except for the, had like white socks on. It really, really, when he, when, when he was a puppy, he looked so dope. Like all, everybody wanted to touch him, pet him. <laughs> but like, Chihuahuas are, are devil spawn. Oh yeah, they they're are. They're nice to you, the owner. They they have like a they have like a like three slot rank where they like number one number two number three people and then everybody after that they're like you're dead to me. Well, it's like that that um, phrase that they say like the chihuahua yeah. like the person with like a chihuahua personality is like kind of small but then like wants to like fight people. All yeah, the time. dude, no, like because like chihuahuas they know that they're small and they know they're weak. Yeah. So they what they do is they use their voice as like a, a deterrent. Yeah. And like, oh my god, if you give a chihuahua like food, if you give like a big dog food and start petting it while it's eating, it's just like, you know, cuz yeah. big big dogs are goofy, but the chihuahua will bite you cuz it thinks that you, like I was like, I just gave you this food. How could you possibly think that I'm going to take <laughs> this food away from you? Yeah. No, so, so man, I I grew up with an Anatolian shepherd, which is like a giant version of a German shepherd with floppy ears sort of thing. Hmm. And she was the smartest dog ever. She was really really incredibly intelligent. She could learn tricks and like that but when it came to being the alpha dog it was always like the teeny tiny teacup chihuahua that would like boss her around she'd just be like oh my god it's a little chihuahua i don't know what to do with it dude chihuahuas are you know that's why they say that elephants are scared of mice which apparently there's some truth to that like elephants don't like little animals walking around their feet basically mm -hmm. and so like i can feel that let's get out onto our next yep. really really serious story um foreign thieves likely behind stolen japanese bonsai amid boom abroad uh, that's something I would never think to steal. <laughs> like, you know. So um, apparently, like, uh, according, according to some of the comments on this, it's like the Vietnamese gang gangsters yeah, yeah, are doing this. Yeah, I saw this. that. But like, uh, so apparently, it's like th this. This this uh, is focusing on one part particular shop, but this is apparently like a, a, a problem throughout the, the the nation. This shop has lost a total of fifteen potted bonsai trees, which he pains painstakingly nurtured in two incidents: one last year, another in January, which thieves caught, cut through a protective fence he had installed. The thieves, uh, the thefts occurred late at night, and in some cases, the stolen bonsai had been entrusted to his care by customers. I think that's totally fucked up. Don't. Yeah, that is fucked up. If you are the if you are the kind hearted person to like raise a bonsai tree which is like so small and intricate and like requires so so much time why don't steal it like any anything you have to raise so like 
uh, it uh, one of the things that was becoming popular in the states for a while is people realized that koi fish like the the white mm -hmm. and orange ones and like especially the the pitch black ones are worth like thousands of dollars of fish mm -hmm. and so they were actually like stealing the fish and like moving them and selling them to people and stuff it's like come on man like people raise those yeah they're like they're like living animals. i don't understand people who sell who steal pets yeah it's like come on actually honestly if i'm like you're lower than whale feces if you do that shit like, if, I'm, if I'm gonna be completely honest i just don't understand people who steal i think if i was yeah. like if i was starving and i had to steal i wouldn't steal from a person i'd steal from like a large like super like supermarket chain or something like that yeah 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 like, i course. wouldn't go to like a mom and pop store and be like excuse me grandma and just like steal a bento <laughs> from in front of her that'd be so fucked up and my, my friend got banned from walmart for stealing Yu-Gi-Oh cards one time that you can event. get banned from walmart you can get banned from walmart i did not know yeah, that was a thing yeah, no he is not allowed to step foot on any walmart property ever again or he'll get arrested i'm sorry i think like i think i think that's like that's <laughs> like a that's like a flex <laughs> for stealing a pack of Yu -Gi -Oh cards. that's like that is like some badass <laughs> like like white trash i'm just assuming he's white white trash yes, flex white. right there yeah. like like i am banned from walmart well he's also if you know him too he is the guy who would get banned from walmart <clears> like <throat> i love him to death but i i was i just assumed that walmart's like theft pol policy was like we can sell more than you can steal but i mean it, it kind of is probably but if they catch you i think they try to make an example and then like so other people won't do it as much as possible but so um so we were just talking about how people just cut a hole through a fence to get into the bonsai uh, uh garden and steal bonsai. by the way those bonsai are only worth like maximum twenty thousand dollars i guess that's but just steal a that's car that's a lot of money for a plant but like they're also they put a lot of work into that like i that that is annoying like the, the loss of work yeah yeah it's like come on okay so speaking of holes here we go holes found in black screen blocking viral mount fuji photo spot we're gonna talk about this every week guys every single mm -hmm. week so here we go there's a uh, this nice little hole here <clears throat> that um people have already made in the plastic tarp that they put up in front of the so, so people would stop taking pictures of this Lawson with a Fuji behind it. <laughs> it's almost like people are clever. It's, a, and it's <laughs> almost like people are resourceful. Yes. I just don't understand this. Like this is the kind of like, you know, punish punish your way into uh submission, Japanese style way of doing something. They mm -hmm. should just profit off of this. They 100% should. They should make it into a, a, a tourist destination, make a bunch of little trinkets and bring in tax revenue and set <clears throat> sorry guys um instead, instead of spending tax money on a stupid fence that doesn't work yeah no it, that's a very very japanese government way of solving a problem yeah it's like it's incredible japanese thinking uh let's keep going uh four japanese vent vessels enter japan's conti uh con contiguous zone near uh senkaku islands uh, 158th consecutive day since december so basically, if you guys don't know about this, China has been recently um, trying to piss off people. So there's a theory that there's no real leadership right now and, and there's a vacuum of leadership in, in China. And so the military doesn't really have any clear orders on what to do. And so what they've just been doing is like harassing their neighbors like Taiwan and Japan. And like they like when uh, American uh, spy planes and stuff like that would like not fly over China, but fly near China they would scramble out jets to like real like fly right next to american aircraft and stuff like that and the thing is is if the chinese accidentally shoot down an american aircraft like the americans aren't gonna be like oh we understand like, oh man <laughs> oh man oh, a, no man. there's gonna be like swift response oh no no the, the americans are notorious for, yeah and so like that. i don't know what they're trying to do anyway the only reason why i put this up is because there was this great comment uh, by no attention 2024 maybe I just watched too much anime but if Tokyo had just one Gundam robot un uh, whiting under Tokyo Bay for <laughs> the time anyone pushes their luck with just a little too much how freaking aw awesome would that be that would be amazing we've got so many articles today I don't even know which ones to talk about uh, let's see so we can do a sports day one uh, you want to do can you, do you yeah, have it up yeah, yeah. All right, do a sports day so um 39 elementary school students were sent to the hospital after suspected heat stroke after a sports day practice. So for those of you who don't know what sports day is, it's like a huge event with all like Japanese schools where basically the whole school kind of competes in like traditional games, things like that, um, like tug of war, uh, of course, running and stuff, too. The only thing is they choose the worst time to do it in either September or like now where mm. it's, it's just getting hot again. And when I was teaching in junior high school, there would be kids like dropping left and right. They literally had a stretcher and two of the other kids would come out and like 
get the kids that were passing out on the stretch and they just put them under like a tent. I was like, what the hell is this? And I asked like everybody, I asked the teachers, why, why are you doing it now? And they're like, well, this is how we've always done it. I'm like, it's insane. So basically, right? No, so so hold on. You gotta understand. Like before, before uh, back in the day, before we had what's that thing called where the globe is getting warmer? Oh, on dunk of global warming. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we had global warming, which is totally real, guys. Um, uh, the the summers uh, and uh, the the spring and fall were a lot more mild, especially yeah. here in Kagoshima. And then they've just been getting so much worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and also, there's also an increase of, uh, or I should say a decrease of children playing outdoors. Mm. Um, because a lot of kids these days, they just sit at home and they play on their phones or they play on their Nintendo Switch or whatever. Right, right. And so they're not used to the outdoor heat and then it's getting hotter. And then so um, you, you see more and more cases of heat stroke. I remember when I was a kid, my mom, bless, bless her soul, she would um, literally put us outside and be like on Saturdays because we didn't have school on Lake Japan. And she would be like, don't come back until the air raid siren. Did you guys have air raid sirens for noon in where did where, North you Carolina? Have air raid sirens for noon? Okay. So. <laughs> what the if hell? You're, if you're an American out there, reach out. Comment on this video. Uh, every day. I don't know. I don't think they do it anymore. But every day at noon, they would test the air raid sirens. Every day? Or no, like, sorry. Every Saturday at noon. Every Saturday? Still, that's that's a lot. Like, ours were tested every once in a while. It was every, every Saturday at noon. They would, they would, because, like, on all the schools, they had, like, I, I don't know if they still have them. They probably do. But on, on top of all the schools, they had, like, the, the rotating siren that would, like, a... No, oh, we had those, too, but, like... And so, it, like, they would test them every Saturday at noon. Really? This is not a normal thing for you? No, no. Well, they was, would they tested ours like maybe once a year at most. Well, I okay. I this this happened every Saturday at noon in Las Vegas, Nevada. Interesting. Um, back in the eighties when I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so it might have been a Cold War thing. I don't know. But maybe, uh, yeah. but uh yeah, they um she would like my mom would put us outside in the heat of the summer in Vegas, we're talking fucking temperatures of 112, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So whatever that is in, in normal units, like 50 something degrees. And she'd be like, don't come back until the air raid siren. And like, <laughs> we would just have to like figure out what to do. And this is why I like, I got into so much bad shit when I was a kid. Like I literally made, I like, I took apart whistling peat fireworks Oh no, this might flag our video. I'm not going to explain what I did, but I took apart fireworks and I made a different type of firework. Uh huh. One that didn't make any like noises or lights, but made a big boom. <laughs> and that was oh, no. fun. Uh, and I think I was like eight years old when I did this. And yeah. another time, me and my brothers, we took a, a two by four and put two nails through it. And I found like a, a like a, a cord attached to like somebody's like TV that they had thrown away. Because in America, you can just throw away your TV on the street. They'll yeah. take it. Everybody does that. So we just cut the cord off of the TV. And then I attached one wire to one nail and another wire to the other nail that has been was st stuck up through this uh, this um, this two by four. And then we like put a hot dog because we had access to our garage, which had a like an outdoor fridge and freezer for right. like because like in America, we used to like buy food in bulk and, you know, for big family, seven boys. Anyway, we got a hot dog out of the, the garage freezer and like put it between the two nails. So this like completes the circuit. Right. And then we plugged it into our neighbor's outdoor outlet and we cooked <laughs> a hot dog on it. This is the kind of shit. That if you put a bunch of, like, if you got a bunch of boys with a lot of free time outside uh -huh. with nothing to do, this is what they do. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was one of them, too. We did so much bad shit. Ingenuity is what I like to call it. What is idle hands, you know? So, oh, um, so anyway, so why are we talking about this? Right, so heat stroke. Heat stroke, yes. Uh, 39 kids were <laughs> sent to the hospital. 39? That's an entire class. Uh... All cases had mild symptoms and all students were sent home afterward. That's good. Um, the highest temperature ever recorded in Ebina City, which is where it happened, was 26.6 degrees reaching near summer weather, which is crazy. Again, we used to, they used to do ours in September. Yeah. 
like September 15th or something like that. So it's still basically summer. It's, it is still officially summer. Yeah. So they, they, so September in Kagoshima now, especially is like literally it's just it's summer, su- it's summer dying. temperature. But you know, one thing that they stopped doing, which sucks back in the day, sports day was cool because, um, all the families would come, put their little tarps out and bring their bentos and get fucking hammered. Really? Yeah, they get fucking drunk. And that's why at sports day at the end, uh, they have like the um, the family competitions where like the dads get involved in shit because by that time they're all fucking hammered. Right. And so like one of the competitions that they do is like a a, a bicycle wheel not with no inner tube or like the, ru- the, right. the, the, the rubber tire on it, but just right, like the right. wheel. We, saw, we did that a and couple of times. And they got to push it with a stick around, yeah. the, around, the, around the running course. That would have been a lot more entertaining if they were drunk. Right. It was so much more fun. And then like somebody had to go and ruin it for everybody. Mm-hmm. And then so now there's like, they don't do it anymore. It's all sober. And during the pandemic, they're like, you only get one parent. That's it. No one else can come. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that too. Yeah. That was so sad because those kids work so hard. Right. They want to see they their really parents. Do. They really yeah. do. They, they work so hard to, to do that. And it's outdoors. Why do it? Anyway, whatever. Speaking of hot, ramen lovers continue to eat noodles <laughs> as restaurant goes up in flames around them. So there's this viral uh, this ramen is- jito. They've got a bunch of uh, locations around Japan. This happened to be in uh, Kabukicho. Went up in flames. You can see here. I don't think I can play this video, but just look at this. You, look at, you can just it's see this. The guys are just sitting there, sitting there while like the kitchen's on fire. This is literally the Japanese equivalent of that dog with the coffee cup meme. Like, oh, the dude, fire I was thinking in the background. Like, like, this is fine. This is fine. Let's put that on screen. One hundred percent. This is the Japanese equivalent of that. It's it's just it's just in a it's just in a a, in a ramen shop. A ramen shop. There you go. This is fine. Right here. This is him right there. This is fine. <laughs> I use this meme all the time to teach people stuff. It's great. It's like a- when people just ignore problems, I'll just show them this <laughs> meme. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a problem. I don't, I don't, I don't have an issue with, with problems. Problems happen. That's okay. What I have an issue with is when there's a problem and then there's a discussion about the problem and there's a solution like proposed to solve the problem and then a couple of months later, the exact same fucking problem happens again. <laughs> you want to piss me off? You want to piss me off? Do that. That's how you piss me off. Is like having the same fucking problem yes. over and over again. This is definitely not not something that would happen recently. Either. Oh yeah, nothing Never. that would ha- nothing that happened recently at my company. No, no, nope, nothing. Uh, there's this uh, uh, Yahoo Finance. Uh, let me come in, click on this so I can link it. Uh, it's a Japanese article about young people and how they feel about the state of the economy and getting married and things like that. Uh, there is a the translation in the Reddit comments about it. I just want to like point out a couple highlights from it. Um, so basically it was a survey. And then, so uh, they're, this is, they're all using pseudonyms, but uh, so w- one girl, a 29 year old woman had experienced living together with a partner in her early twenties. Uh, after their breakup, she used a marriage matching app until the age of 27, but now has no desire to get married until, uh, or have children. After graduating from high school, she left her parents' home in a rural area and went to college on a scholarship. And apparently, I guess this is a mistranslation. I'll have to look at the Japanese, but she's like, she's currently saving money to buy an apartment because it says later on that she paid back her scholarship, which from what that, I understand, scholarships you don't yeah. pay back. Yeah, that, that makes no sense. <laughs> anyway, the economic situation in Japan is getting worse and worse. To be honest, it's tough to have one uh, to have one more person to be responsible for when I'm I'm so busy taking care of myself. Besides, when I look at the world, there uh, there are wars going on all over the place. If I had a boy and he had to be sent to war, I can't help but think about it. That's like just I mean, I get it. I do understand that to a certain extent. However, <laughs> like, it's just uh, it it's thinking too much about everything. I think too. There's right? another one. A um a a, a man. He's 26. It says that him uh, his wife both graduated from the same university. They've been married for five years and work full time while his wife works uh, remotely. Um, in talking with my wife about what to do about children, I realized that I wasn't ready or confident enough to bring in new life into this world. Uh, I sometimes come home late. Uh, I sometimes come home late because of work and socializing with business associates. My wife asked me, "What are you going to do when we have children?" I told her that I would try to come home early, but she said, "I don't trust your words that things will change when we have children. Mm-hmm. You never cook. Uh, you never cook dinner together." So, this goes on for like three more pages of people talking about this. There's another. Um, 
person who is married for a year, loves children, often plays with them, uh, with her relatives. But she says uh, there are a lot of oppressive attitudes towards mo- mothers in the society. The other day, there was a mother coming on the train with a, a stroller and no one would make room for her. Um, uh, another day, a man uh, tisked his tongue at it when a child cried. That atmosphere is frightening. So she doesn't want to bring a child into I mean, that. There, that's definitely, that does bring up a point is there is some cultural stuff that needs to change here regarding that. I told my staff, <laughs> this is the Stapleton Ake Iowa policy. I told uh, Kanna, one of our, she's, she refuses to be on this show. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm good. I don't need to be on small talk. I think it's because like she knows that we we sometimes talk about inappropriate things. But anyway, she's like, um, she's great. I love Kana. She uh she she had a baby and she's like, what am I gonna do? I was like, lady, you can carry your baby around and work for all I care. <laughs> I was like, whatever you need, just let me know. She's like, okay. And then like we uh, we had her like post maternity to leave like interview, like trying to figure out what to do with her hours and shit. She's like, well. I don't want to come in any earlier than this time. And I don't want to work any later than this time. And I was like writing and I was like, okay. <laughs> and she's like, you know, and I want to make sure that I have time to go to the, to the, what is whatever the, the organic market and all this other shit. I'm like, okay. The okay. <laughs> There's an organic market. Here? I don't know. She had like all these, like all these like requirements. I was like, so what can we do? <laughs> and I was just like, whatever you want to do, Kata, I don't care. I'll try to meet you there. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, as a young man, 27, 27 year old yeah. uh, how do you feel about working in a country where um, people like you know like because we you know if, if you come from America like we do uh, you you, you kind of it's, it's wrong but you kind of think about your salary in terms of like dollars right you're yeah, like how yeah. much is this in US dollars and you're like oh it's $15 okay yeah yeah no, uh, how, do you, do how do you feel about the economy and the, the future of the economy here? Uh, um, that's a loaded question <laughs> I mean, you got to consider too. My family's kind of all over the world right now. <laughs> like that? my fa- my family's kind of all over the world right now. My parents are in Europe. My sister's in California. Is that Europe? That's like an island off the coast of Africa. It is Europe in terms of. It's technically Europe in terms of currency. Okay, it's Europe, <laughs> and the euro is not an easy one to transfer yen over to. Dude, I was I didn't know this. Uh, uh pound to yen. Dude, did you see this? Oh my god. Look at this. It's 200 yen to the pound right now. What? It is 200 yen to the pound right now. Jeez. I was like, what the fuck? I've never seen that before in my entire life. Yeah, no, I mean, that's uh that's crazy. Things are getting bad here and they need to do something about it. Well, but... you, do you mean do nothing about it? Cuz that's oh, yes, what of they're course, doing. Oh, yeah, because that's the logical thing to do. Yeah. No, people need to stop holding onto their damn money here and start spending I, they, it a they little need bit. A, they need, well, the young people are spending all their money and old people are hoarding all their money. Yeah. Honestly, they just need to, banks need to just like incentivize people to be entrepreneurs and like loan money. Yeah. All the entrepreneurs that I know have kids, except for me. How many kids do you have? Well, it, it, it's just like, it's everything ties into it together, right? Like I've been practicing to make children my entire life. Since I was 14 years old, <laughs> I have been practicing to make children. <laughs> and as far as I know, I haven't been successful yet. <laughs> as far as you know. I, 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 I mean, like, I talked to all the people that I had relations with, and, and as far as I know, just none to of them. Just <laughs> Although, sure although, speaking back of Kana, who's currently pregnant, she's like six months pregnant or something? How pregnant is she? She's like pregnant, pregnant, she's right? She's like, yeah, something like that. She's barely six showing. Months. I'm like, are you pregnant or did you just eat too much? <laughs> <laughs> she's also tiny though. I can't really see. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like, although a lot of Japanese girls, they do hide the pregnancy pretty damn well. I'm like, yeah, you're yes. pregnant? Speaking of the economy, $20,000 annual pay Japan's weekend drives away Asian talent. So this is basically from the Nikkei Asia. This is basically a long uh, article that talks about how Japanese uh, people, or the Japanese economy is not attracting uh, foreign talent. I wonder why. Well, there's the, uh, well, don't, don't your parents live in Portugal? We're doing better than they them. They do, yeah, that's We're true, doing actually. Better than them. I didn't even realize that. Portugal's never had a very good economy, <laughs> though. 
Anything in the south of Europe has never had a good economy, except yeah. for Rome when they were doing the Roman stuff. But yeah, but you can't really call it Italian. Did you anymore? know that Italian cuisine is only like a dec- like only a few decades old? It's yeah, because like they didn't, they didn't have old. tomatoes. Yeah, I didn't know this. Tomatoes are from uh, what South America? Whatever. I, I thought this was. I thought like Italian like cuisine was like forever, and it's like no, no it's like a no. completely new thing. No, literally, they didn't have potatoes or tomatoes. For so a when long when, time. when Italians are like doing this with their hands and telling you you're making shit wrong, be like, fuck you, I can do what I want. It's like this is. A- centuries old like no it's not the not reason why old. the reason why i brought up this this article i mean it's all just bad news but there was this really good reddit comment on it uh and it was like oh man japan would be having such an insane brain drain right now if they didn't have the foresight to kneecap english language education <laughs> <laughs> fuck it shoot no uh, at a score fuck it jesus <laughs> christ that was from vote for boat fucking good job three point shot right there that was fuck it nailed oh, it right there nailed it on the head oh my god <laughs> i mean the fact that they still even use katakana english here is just... i have been trying to figure out what katakana is for other than like fun <laughs> it just seems like it's for fun no it's it's bragging rights is what it is like we have four writing systems actually yeah I it's mean, like, yeah, but two of them are basically the same, and one of them you don't need. Korea, Korea was like, "Fuck your Chinese shit. We're gonna make Hangul," and uh, you and know, it's incredibly easy to. Apparently, <laughs> you can learn in a day. Yeah, yeah. No, I learned a little bit of it. It's just, it's the pronunciation that's difficult for it. It's not the reading it. Oh, dude. Oh, I can't say that joke. It's no, nah, it's wrong. Never mind. I keep, I keep that to myself. See, I can filter people. I can filter a little bit. Uh, uh, speaking of, I don't know how to transition to the zombies. <laughs> speaking of zombies, <laughs> rainbow spotted unicorns. Z- zombie train will return this summer to haunt passengers. So there's a train uh, in Tochigi Prefecture. The wildly popular zombie train will return from the grave, <laughs> grave once more to terrify passengers daring enough to ride the the rails along hordes of the undead for 90 minutes. Wait, I, I love the picture of this this girl in the front here who's just like sitting there like very Japanese about it, like trying to ignore the problem. <laughs> It's just like, mm. well, if you ignore it, it'll go. Away, it'll right? go away. Maybe it'll go away. The zombie train will run for a total of nine days, mainly on Sunday, starting from June second and continuing through September first. The inbound service will leave from uh, Tsudo Station here, while the outbound service will depart from Omama. Oh my God, Omama, Omama? Station in Midori oh, Gu- Guma Prefecture. Uh, so basically they, they created this, uh, after COVID-19 so that people would ride the train and apparently it was largely successful last year. Oh, I'm sure it would be. Almost 180, it's like 1080p seats available during the zombie tra- train nine days operation sold out last year. Horror buffs. I don't understand people who are horror buffs. I don't either. I, I would totally, I would totally do this. This looks fucking fun. This, hilarious. This does look fun, but I'd be scared about like accidentally like just hitting them hitting somebody yeah. dude in Ve- going back to vegas there's this thing called the adventure dome let's put that on the fucking screen Doom. the adventure Dome. oh they have a theme song it adventure dome adventure dome no no it's like it, it's like in las vegas there's a canyon this is this is this is the bam this is the las vegas adventure dome it is a circus circus i need to do redo the way that this crops uh hold on let me let me let me let me last time i had to like seriously edit the episode because i'm so dumb that i um i kept showing my personal information on screen <laughs> anyway this is the adventure dome it's a giant pink dome if you're it's listening a to this, it's a giant pink dome next to the circus circus which i don't understand i well, last time i went home to las vegas i i it was during the um the pandemic and so like i had to get his to get my tickets and everything so i used like a i used a what do you call it travel agency, travel agency yeah. for the first time in forever for the first time anyway and so like <laughs> it sucked uh it was horrible yeah i'm sure it was and anyway i had to stay at the circus circus which was terrible don't ever stay at the circus circus this is the adventure dome it's basically uh an air-conditioned theme park inside a giant pink dome because the las vegas 90s was stupid that looks like a 90s project right there that's for sure oh dude the interior is so incredibly 90s anyway so this thing um is amazing because they used to have they don't anymore because they stopped trying i think they just like I think they forgot that they have this thing, to be honest with you. I like walked through it when I went to Vegas last time and it's like, look, look at, look it's at very it. purple. Oh, it's like all the pastel colors from the nineties really back when everybody was happy and we had hopes and dreams and friends was on TV. Yeah. And, uh, and then nine 11 happened good and everything went to shit. Economies and yeah, this is when the economy was on fire. Thank you, Bill Clinton. Um, anyway, so 
in this in this in this place they had uh, a Halloween like scare horror dome or something like that horror dome dome and so like they filled the entire theme park full of like characters that would like walk around and scare you and then they also filled it with smoke so you could only see a few feet in any direction oh that's that's actually kind of creepy right and then on top of that inside here they have like dinosaurs and shit so they had like a haunted house that you could walk through and at the very end of the ha ha the haunted house it, was not, it wasn't a haunted house it's a haunted maze in like through all the fake canyon and we have, we and have all those too yeah the very last thing that happened to like jump scare you to run away from the horror house to like run out the exit was like suddenly this like 16 foot this like four meter tall t-rex just like bounced out of a fucking wall at you and screamed at you <sighs> oh. and i was with, i was with like a couple of my friends and one of my friends is really really tall and he just fucking slugged <laughs> out of complete reaction he just like hit this that's what giant i was saying with the zombie train i'd be really worried about somebody doing that that's, what I'm, that's, that's where we're going. So he hit the T-Rex, the poor T-Rex. And like, we got yelled at. It's like, you can't make contact with the performers. I'm like, it's a robot. It's like, but it's a, yeah. Anyway. It's a reactionary thing. Can you imagine being in a boardroom one day and be like, all right, guys, we got this plot of lab. I, I got an idea. We're going to make a giant pink dome and we're going to put roller coasters in it. And somebody would be like, you know, that's a fucking great that's idea. That's a great idea. Let's do it. <laughs> Now, there was, there was actually a time when Las Vegas had two theme parks. There was the Circus Circus, and then there was the MGM Adventures. What the hell was that thing called? MGM Theme Park. I forgot what it was called. It, nope, in Las Vegas. Let's include Las Vegas. So, yeah, Las, it's weird to grow up in this place. MGM Grand Adventures, that's the name of it. Well, Japan's got quite a few little things like that. They're all abandoned now. Yeah, they're like, all abandoned. And like we don't, dude. Psh, we psh, like no, we we don't do that in Vegas. In Vegas, they get. Oh my God, what what just happened? What what just happened? That's that lion. That is that lion. Um, I'm gonna try to find a picture of MGM Grand. There it is. So we had like this theme park with like water rides and shit in the middle God, of the desert. That looks just like the '90s. That was great. We went there all the time. And then there was also the old school. They ha We have a new one, but we have there's an old school, uh, old, wet, and wild Las Vegas. Oh, man, this place was so stupid. Remember, guys, Las Vegas gets up to like 50 degrees Celsius. It's like 100, 100 and some odd degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And we had throughout the 80s and 90s uh, this crazy water park. I'm going to try to find a picture of it. <laughs> There's also like what? How much rainfall do you guys get? Zero. No, Zero? Yeah, that's what I thought. Nothing. There's this crazy water park on the Las Vegas Strip that had like crazy. This is the wave pool. This is only like maybe one quarter of the size of the actual whole park. Yeah. Tyler was showing me this the other day. And it, yeah, insane. dude. And like, so what happened? So when I get skin cancer in the future, we'll know why. And this is why. Because uh, for my mom, bless her, her, her heart, rest her soul. She would be like. Wet n Wild has an annual pass that only costs $100. And she was like, that means I can buy a babysitter for all of my kids for $600 at the time. There's only six of us. And so, so all she did was drive her van because she had a mommy van down to Wet n Wild and just dr during the summer because we were home for three months. Right. Mm -hmm. And she just dropped us off at Wet n Wild and then drove away. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds familiar. And she'd come back like, she'd come back like, like around 6 p.m. or something like that. We, this is before cell phones. We had to like make a meeting time and stuff like that. Right. And then, right. Like, and then we'd come back and like we were kids. So we thought our mom's awesome. But really, it was just child. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, mom. Uh, study in Japan issues residential certificates for same sex male couple as unregistered husbands. And I'm t totally fucking for this. Yes. Uh, and this is in Omura City in, in Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Yeah. yeah. Did you know? I didn't know this. I thought because like when you write Nevada State or like Washington State, both letters of both words are capitalized. The W and the S. Yeah. And the, the yeah. Whatever. When you were, write the word prefecture, it's not capitalized. Look. Like, isn't that oh, weird? Yeah. Isn't that weird? I never noticed that before. That's so weird. I That's true. Why. Yeah. Anyway, so basically oh. the city was like, you know what? It's it's not fair that these people can't get married. Let them get married. And they got married. And that's cool. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Remember in the 90s when we were debating whether or not homosexuality was like, okay. And now we're like, it's okay. And Japan's like, is homosexuality okay? Uh-huh. 
Yeah. They'll get there eventually. It just takes like 12,000 years for things to change. I was watching a TV show and like these these two obviously together gay guys were like talking. This is like Japanese idols like walking around and like interviewing tourists. And she was like, she's like, you know, idols are known for being not intelligent. And she's like, where are you two from? And they're like, are you guys friends? And they're like, no, we're married. And you could just see her brain like do all the calculations. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And she's like... <laughs> What do you mean you're married? <laughs> and like, and like the guy is like, oh, sweetie, in other countries, people like us can get married. And she's like, why? <laughs> oh, God. And they aired this on TV. I was like, that's hilarious. That is kind of funny. Uh, Jesus. I'm trying to find something to end the show on, but we only have like bad news this week. Uh, uh, pay is down. Dog is dead. I guess the gay Whoa. guys is the only happy news this week. I guess the ramen thing was the zombie thing. The ramen was okay. thing was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, the only th- we only have one story left. Here we go. It is Mega Solar is a dirty word in Japan. Where do solar projects go from here? I didn't really get this. <laughs> Nim- NIMBY, like, not in my backyard. Is all it's not a bunch in my of backyard. Yeah, thing, people yeah, who are like, we don't want a bunch of solar farms in our backyard. Here's a fun fact: Kyushu is the only place in Japan where the power has not ro- gone gotten more expensive over the last couple of years. Really? And here's why. Most of our power comes from solar. Funny how that works. It's almost like there's this giant nuclear furnace in the sky mm-hmm. that provides us with ample free energy every day. It's called the sun. Yeah, but God not, made not it for not us, my you backyard, Christians. God damn it. God made it for not, us, you Christians. Not in my backyard. Those things are evil against against all of my religions. Look at this guy. He's trying his, uh, his best. Yeah. Mega Sora. What does mega solar even mean? That sounds like a katakanaism to me. No, it's like, you know, they they have all these like, so I, I think it's cool. I think all these little solar p- projects are all over the country are cool. I That's, think it's good. Too. And people are like individually doing it on their own houses. Like one of the teachers I used to work with has it on her house. So that was one of the comments I didn't. Oh, so they're, they're actually combining solar farms and, uh, and farm farms mm-hmm. like for, for crops that need to be like kind of like half covered or whatever. Anyway, um, one of the things that people are complaining about is in Tokyo, there's like an ordinance that requires uh, homeowners to install solar panels on their new homes. And the subsidies for that are kind of like wonky. And so they end up paying more for it anyways. And so this is one of the things that they're kind of against. Um, I'm all for requiring, because hello, if we're going to make buildings and they have all this flat surface on the top of them, mm-hmm. that's not being used for anything. I'm all for making them to solar 100% panels. 100% I am too. It's like the initial installment cost is allegedly quite expensive but i mean over time the thing is you got to think over time i think power companies should just buy people's roofs yeah i think they should be like can i have your roof or can i rent your roof or can i just like put solar panels on your roof and give you cheaper electricity for the rest of your life i'd be like yeah yeah i'd be like (laughs) cool and then they don't have to pay for fucking you know natural gas or coal or whatever and most of it in japan is just nuclear uh nuclear but whatever you know yeah um, I don't know. I, I feel like we should let end the show on something fun. Uh, okay. Let's, let's, I just, I pulled up. So Soda news is always where I get like my stupid articles from. So this, we'll just, we'll just end, uh, end the show on this. Mount Fuji view blocking screen to combat <laughs> bad tourist manners might be replaced Replace with another screen. Another screen. <laughs> God, how do they not like winning? Just how do they not realize how f- funny this is? I want them like, to keep doing this. For the, I hope so too. I for really as long hope. as I live in Japan, Japan, please promise that you keep doing this. I, I want them to just keep making it more and more elaborate and then people to just find more and more <laughs> elaborate ways to, to, to get around it. <laughs> I mean, oh, like I said, why don't you capitalize on it, you fucking idiots? What's they, wrong with they you? They can make so much money. Oh, whatever, man. Like it is. Oh. I, sometimes I hate how much logic doesn't apply here, but sometimes I love it. Sometimes they some, get. They're so smart about some things. They really are. And sometimes when you're like, "What are?" You? It's it's the design by committee. Anytime yeah. there's something stupid in Japan, it's always been designed by committee. That's all it is. That's that's 100 percent what it is. Anyways, yeah, guys, definitely. that's what our show today. You can find links to all the articles that we talked about and ragged on in the in the video description. There's also a link to our Patreon where you can support us if you want to. Uh, anyway, we, we make episodes every single week. 
Uh, we get deep dives in the news. By deep dive, I mean that we look, we read the news and we kind of make and fun of, kind of talk smack about it. It's better when Natsuki's on here. But although so recently I've been like depressing Natsuki, like when we talk about like how the future is like on fire, she's like, "What am I gonna do?" She starts getting depressed yeah, on she's the got show. Her kids now, and I'm like, Natsuki, laugh about it. She's like, "No, what am I gonna do?" I was like, "Teach them English, send them abroad." Teach them English, send them abroad. Anyways, guys, that's been our show. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye.